Talk here for a couple minutes about some of the work that we're doing here at Inkster. And so actually, if you look right behind us, um, those are some plots there that my graduate student Fabian, wherever he's hiding, um, he's right over there, yes. Fabian's from Kenya. He just started here. It's a row spacing study that we're conducting. And we're looking at uh, 28, 30, 32, 34, and 36 inch row spacings. We have four chipping varieties and two reds and two yellow varieties in that trial. They're split up by chips and fresh. Um, it's an interesting project. We had to buy a new planter. We're still learning how to do it. It's probably not going to be the best results this year because of some challenges we've had with it. But I knew that going in, whenever you start some kind of new wild idea, uh, that's what's going to happen. You're going to have probably a handful of mistakes the first time you do it. Um, but the good news is we've got funding from Specialty Crop Block Grants to fund this in North Dakota, Minnesota over the next couple of years. So uh, everyone who wrote grants of or letters of support, we really appreciate that. So we're hoping to learn from this to see if narrow row spacing can benefit our growers by providing more yield and more profits. That's been shown to happen in Washington with russets, and so we're focusing on the yellows, reds, and chips here. So that's one project we got going on here. Don't have any data yet, but again, it's a first year study. Uh, another project we've got going on, got some projects in the back corner back here. Uh, we have a seed lot grow out trial we did for growers just to check seed. Um, We've got a project looking at calcium nitrate from Yara. Again, you can't see much on that. It's going to be more looking at uh, tuber hollow heart is really the focus on that to see if we can reduce hollow heart, which this year is probably a good year for that with the heat we've had and the low sets. We're probably going to see more physiological disorders in tubers, hollow heart, sugar ends, malformed tubers. We have an extension article on second growth of potatoes. If you look that up on the NDSU potato website, uh, there's information there. Um, we have a seed treatment project that the growers supported. So they're it's a seed treatment in that we're putting on different seed treatments to see if it affects the stand and the yield. We're not looking at the disease control because Julie's doing that work in Gary and they'll talk about that. So, um, but this project is more housing agronomy focused to see if there's any uh, negative effects from some of the common seed treatments that are utilized by growers. And so that was something that came up that the growers wanted to be wanted us to do. So uh, we were able to do that. Um, and then um, we also have a plot back there with a few weeds in it, um, testing some new compounds that might potentially be available for growers in the future. So that kind of gives you a rundown of some of the work we're doing here. Uh, we've got plots here at Inkster. We have our red and yellow variety trial work up in Hoople with Hall's far TJ Hall and their farm. And we have 20 reds and 30 yellow varieties that we're testing. And so those come from uh, private breeding programs, public breeding programs, and advanced selections that look good trying to help the growers in the Red River Valley find what the next best variety options are for them. And then we've got trials in Tappan, looking at nitrogen on uh, some newer varieties there. We do a handful of trials in Oaks, North Dakota, mostly fertility trials. Um, and then we have work also in Park Rapids and also Laramie. I got lots of places. We got too much we're doing, but it's all for you guys. So, uh, um, but anyway, my other grad student, Jed Groh, who's here, we're doing a project on looking at bulking rates of russet Burbank, Bannock russet, and Dakota russet. So we're, we're sampling those every two weeks to look at how rapid they bulk. And we're also sampling the verticillium in the stems to see how fast the verticillium increases. And so we're working with Julie Paschi on that project. And that's a very interesting project because we don't know if anybody that's ever looked at verticillium accumulation during the growing season. And so... Um, kind of a fun project and I think we'll learn a lot of good information from that once you know we get a few years of data on that so gives you kind of an idea of some of the work we're doing uh, to try to support our industry here um, we uh, we appreciate you know the growers supporting a lot of these projects a lot of these are grower funded we get, we get funds also through company and other grants like special crop research block grants so helps us get the work done um, and I can't go away without mentioning Eric and Peter. Where are you guys at? Over here. Eric and Peter, they're the ones that really get the field work done when I'm running around taking care of all the extension calls and all the problems that growers have or giving the talks. Eric and Peter are the ones that are actually out in the field planting it and harvesting it and doing all the treatments. And so, I mean, they do most of the heavy lifting. I just help get everything organized and answer questions more or less. So it's just the nature of the beast. I can't be everywhere at the same time. So we really appreciate uh, those guys and what they do to help make everything happen. Mm -hmm.